my name is Steve Rennie. I am the Wren Baron, and this is my Wren Baron Learning to Fly YouTube channel. Recently, I posted a video featuring top Cirrus flight instructor Ed Waters showing you how to set up a pilot profile in the Cirrus Perspective Plus avionics system. That video discussed how to set up your PFD options. Now, if you've not yet watched that video, I'd suggest that you start there first. And to help you out, I posted a link to it in the description below. Today, I'm posting part two in the series of videos where Ed is going to describe in detail how to set up your MFD options in the pilot profile. Let's head out to the cockpit and see if we can learn something new. Yeah, I see you have local time displayed and we fly IFR, they never talk to us in local time and we fly these planes a long way so we change time zones so we're going to set that to uh, uh, UTC and we can do it from these settings over here. Okay. So why don't you go to uh, the time format? We're going to go big knob over to the time and that's me. A little, a little knob going. now. Going to the right now, once you're in it, it's a little knob, right? Yeah, we're going to go UTC. UTC, which means I'm going to have to figure out UTC yep. time for real here. Then we're going to hit enter, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Now we got it up there. In your foreflight, when you go to settings, is to make sure that your position format matches up to what's in your foreflight on your iPad. So do you have your iPad handy? Uh, I, I do. So I go, to, go to more. Okay. There it is. There you go. Okay. Okay. So settings. We're going to go up top to settings, okay. And then you're going to scroll down to units time. Units and time. Units time, which is under preferences, folks, if, you, if you're if you following along here. Yep, click on, click on units time. And then you're going to see coordinates. Okay, so you have, we I think we did this before, so you're matched up, all right? Okay. If these coordinates don't match, you cannot send in user waypoints by a flight stream. So I mean, for translating that for folks, that means you can't take your flight plan and Bluetooth it over here to uh, the. MFD. Yeah, so one of some of the um, other avionics have a thing called rubber banding. And of course, we can't rubber band on our MFD. But let's just say, put your maps up. Okay. Yeah, so what you're able to do here comes in very handy for um, VFR flying. So let's say you're getting VFR flight following. There's a MOA in front of you and they say it's going hot, they want you to stay out of it. Touch touch the flight plan, drag it over, right? See the coordinate? Yep, click press, that. Press that. And then I send it to the... And then you can send that to the panel. And, the way and it goes in as that. a user waypoint, and then you can fly that route. So it gives you the ability to rubber band. So I do a lot of work on my iPad. If I get a reroute on a flight plan, I generally don't put it all in here manually. Mm -hmm. I just type it in and, and then send, send it to the panel. Yeah. How good is that, folks? From, it's, yeah. from when you there's a lot of shortcuts. Um, yeah. There's a lot, you know. There's a lot to learn with Perspective Plus. There's a lot to learn with ForeFlight, and uh, we never stop learning. All, All right. right. So let's go over here again. Now we Get have airspace way. alerts. Okay. So you have on your airspace alerts Class B on, and okay. I shut that off. The only one I have, uh, the only one I have on is the um, restricted. And the reason we're going to shut that off is... But we're on an IFR clearance, so we don't have to get clearance to go into the Bravo. And MOA, so the controller's responsibility is to keep traffic separated in MOA. So we don't really need to know. We don't need to, I don't need to have that on. Now, does that take it off of... This is just regarding alerts. It doesn't have anything to do with what's displayed on the map with via Correct. MOA. Okay, great. Correct. So let's get rid of that. Yep. Now, on the data bar fields, there's a, there's a ton of different ones. So really what I'll do... Now that's these things up top here, yep. just to be clear for, for some of those. So there's a whole bunch of different options. This is your buffet again here, Ed. Yeah. Uh, if folks read the Garmin manual, there's an explanation for all these. But there's one in here that's kind of interesting, uh, CCG, and that's current climb gradient. So that's what it says, but it doesn't explain what it is. I'm going to show you my smile because Ed, when he landed yesterday, told me he just finished the 594-page uh, Garmin just reviewed manual. It. I just reviewed it. All right, well, CCG, if you're um, doing an obstacle departure procedure and it requires a non-standard climb, okay. it's always ah. given it's always given to you in feet per nautical mile. And this, if you display that, will show you what you're climbing in feet per nautical mile. Yeah, let's, what's, what are we going to trade it out for? Let's yeah, we're not going to do it because we're not going to do any obstacle departure procedures. Okay. Yep. But what I do is I put in desired track because the desired track's your Bible. So that's your, if somebody asks you what your on-course heading is, if you're on an airway, uh, if you're on a, an approach segment, it's always that's always the desired track. Um, doing a lot of IFR training, uh, and for experienced pilots, I ask them, do you do a lot of um, ILS approaches? People say yes. 
So what I put in is cross track. All right. So cross track we have in GPS, but anytime we're doing either a VOR or an ILS approach, we're in green needles and we have no cross track. So when you're getting vectored for an approach and they put you on a base leg, it's generally four to five miles or three miles. Once you get into about one mile and uh, about a mile and a half, and you have your autopilot on, you better have your hand here, all right? Because sometimes they'll give you a very tight vector. And they're always going to give you a 30 degree intercept and they're going to tell you to maintain an altitude and they're going to clear you for the approach. And you quickly have to turn your heading, press the approach button, and, and then read it back. Don't read it back first, because if they put you on a tight vector, you could go through the localizer and all you're going to do is you're going to, continue, you're going to continue flying on that heading. And this gives you anticipation and situational awareness where that final vector is going to come. Okay. okay. So I like cross track. The other one I like for you is in this particular software, you have GAGL. Okay. okay. All right. In slot number three, I'm going to put fuel on board. All right. That tells us how much fuel we have. And then here I'll have GAGL. Okay. Explain what GAGL is. That's, that's, our, that's our AGL altitude, so which comes into play for caps. All right. So the standard procedure is, if you do, if you did lose your engine, our hard deck is 2,000. So you'll know when you're 2,000 feet above the ground. It only displays up to 9,999 because it's only got a four-digit capability. So if you're at 11,000 feet, your GAGL is going to be zero. Okay, so let me ask you a question. It's telling me how far above the ground I am at this specific moment. Correct. In time. Yeah. About five years ago, I was in a I was with another COPA member. We had a catastrophic engine failure in the northern part of the Everglades. And uh, what I learned from that is um, all your little fingers and brain don't work really sharply for the first, you know, few seconds. And uh, but your eyes work, so you can quickly scan and, and see what that is. If you, you know, people talk about, well, I'm going to lose an engine. Well, I'm going to switch to FLC and I'm going to do my best glide. And I always say, you know, good luck with that. It sounds good having coffee. You know, That's when it true. actually happens, uh, it's it's hard to process. What Garmin did for the next upgrade, which you'll be getting, is they took GAGL and it's permanently displayed over here by the flight timer. What happened was, of course, I like to display nearest airport from that experience because all I need to do is look down where my nearest is, but you notice it covers up the flight timer yeah. and the GAGL. Hopefully they'll change that. So that gives us really all, this gives us all the information that I think is very helpful when you're flying IFR. Um, and then we have our, our map page, detail. I generally like detail three. You have state. You, know, you have state lines. When I get on the ground, one day I called up at my guys here. My MFD is not working properly. I'm not able to display the airport taxiways. And what I learned is, that if you're on to detail one, that goes away, and you think it's broken. Two, so you can go detail two before that goes away. Right? Let's go four. Let's go four, or all. All right. Okay. And then what you'll notice as we zoom out, there's your shelves. Ah. The so right here. Back. Okay. Okay. Uh, so there's right. the Bravo shelf. Okay. Well, you got me set up again here. That's good. Yep. Okay. So there you go. All right. So we have. All right. So I see you're you're displaying absolute traffic, which I think is very good for IFR. Let's so we got map settings, and we're going to go up to map. Okay. All right. So for the map, I fly track up. A lot of folks fly north up. They tend to be the people with the highest IQs. I get confused. Uh, the only thing I don't have is the uh, the field of view. But here's the, the glide range ring, and that's displayed on. Uh, I don't use the uh, field of view, but you like it. For me, I always had a difficult time, but my position is um, heading 300 degrees. Well, if you so, just look at the bottom of your HSI, that's where you're coming from. So I, right here, we'd be coming from the southeast. Map page, weather. Okay. So on my map page, when I fly IFR, first of all, you want to have your next red on. Okay. All right. Um, animation, I shut off on this page because it's a 30-minute sweep, and when I'm scanning and busy, uh, I don't want to look over and see something that was 30 minutes old Got it. Uh, when it came to the cockpit. I want to see the, the three- or four-minute one. Just so, so, so to be clear, animation is what you kind of see the gentle little Yeah, it's movement. just like when you're watching, you know, if you're watching the news and they're showing the radar Got moving it. on the, but when the weather comes But it's so on. old that it's not relevant. Yeah. And then I do put the METAR, METARs on on this particular page. Okay. Traffic, all right, so you get that on. Those settings are good. Aviation, uh, those are all good. I'm not going to get into all the detail. It's, just, it's endless. Uh, smart airspace on, labels, airspace labels. Yeah, I always want these on. 
right? Okay. So that gives you an indication where the, the shelves are and the tops okay. of, okay. even though even though I'm flying IFR. So you, you're you flying a plane here like you're flying a jet. Um, so you want your airways on the low airways, okay. all right? And you want high off. And that cleans up a lot of clutter, okay? Lands, that's all good. Now, this is the one, just to be clear, is the one that shows you highways and so forth. Sure. And you got your detail that's down really low, too. So some of the stuff that you have displayed here is, is going to be, you, you got it knocked out on the detail. That's just going detail one, detail two. Correct, detail. yeah, you got it knocked out there. So. And the last one is VSD. And um, Pretty cool situation display. Yeah, it's on auto and winds are on. That's okay. I'm all right with all those. So back to the home button. And now I take the little knob. Next one down is IFR, VFR charts. Okay. You really can't do anything with this. You just switch between VFR and IFR. And what this will display is it'll display traffic. And it'll, uh, it'll show your airplane, which is very hard to see because it's white, not magenta. If you look at an approach chart, your airplane's magenta. On this, it's white. It'll show you your flight plan and traffic. Um, these maps are always north up. And it does not show weather. So you can't change your orientation. You can't display weather. But I like this. And um, when I fly IFR, I generally have the VFR chart up because it's not always cloudy, and I'm kind of interested, hey, what's that down there? And I yeah, this gives you much more detail about what's below you than the IFR charts, which really don't tell you much except the airways. I'll use my iPad for some significant worth because one of the things you, you cannot do, with your iPad, we can pinch zoom it, I, and I love that feature. Of course, we can't pinch zoom the MFD, okay? So the next one down is traffic, all right? So traffic, a couple things here. We have altitude mode. Okay, so you have unrestricted, and you get everything. So everything within 25 to 28 miles is going to show on your screen. So that's kind of busy. So what I always do is I put normal, and normal is 2,700 feet above you and 2,700 feet below. Um, motion, okay, so motion you have is absolute, which is what I use for IFR flying. Explain the difference between absolute okay, and Okay, so this shows you the direction of the aircraft, and this direction of the aircraft will display on the map page also. If you use relative traffic, it, it's yeah, it's processing this, but we should see a green line. We don't have a green line because we're not moving. Okay, it, it. If we were in motion, it would calculate where that plane's going to be in relation to our position, but we have to be above um, 35 knots for that to work. But when you have green relative here displayed, that won't display on the, MF, on the map page on the MFD because green is used by next rad for precipitation back absolute so and absolute and relative just so i'm clear absolute and relative are pretty much the same thing except that the green line goes the green line will it. calculate where that plane's going to be relative to your position and the duration it was set and these lines right here when showing I added, showing actually, the direction of the airplane and then we have the flight id so we can have flight id here and then pressing in the fms and coming around we can see who these planes are so there's a helicopter, and that's a tail number. Uh, we have CRGS track uh, airborne surface. So CR means closure rate. So that'll give you the closure rate with that airplane. So let's say we were going 200 knots this way. Somebody's coming 200. We're going to get a closure rate of 400 knots. I'll tell you where I use this a lot for some of the new guys out there. In my attempt to be more traffic aware, instead of just listening for my tail number, I can easily identify those by moving this thing around now. And this is a trick that Ed taught me, which I find invaluable in terms of just increasing your yeah, it's fun. awareness of what's going on out Sometimes there. Sometimes I hear a call sign like, hey, I think I've flown that airplane. It might be one of my customers, and I'll pop it up and see it. And I'll well, it's that. funny you should mention that, because when you're flying into Santa Monica, I'm constantly keeping track of all the planes I flew over here at Santa Monica yeah. Flyers. Yeah, know? so I could say, hey, you got uh, 8 4 November on frequency? Yeah. And the guy says, yes. I, I To the controller, and I'll say, well, he's a good pilot. You know, and everybody just gets a little chuckle, because, you know, we all get a little bored sometimes uh, in our trips. All right. Uh, weather data link. So now we have, we have weather data link, and one of the things I can see is that you have METARs on there. And when you, when you zoom that out, you get a lot of METARs. Lot of METARs. All right, so let me just walk you through some of the settings on this. Okay. All right, so I'm going to take METARs off, which is going to clean it up. We have all the products uh, on here that I like. Under more weather, I have pie reps on here, which are very good to, uh, handy to get in flight. Uh, the surface map, which shows fronts, uh, I put that on currents. 
I, I think that's interesting. It doesn't really clutter up the map. You got winds, you got turbulence. Yeah, you can put some of those things on if you want. They were going to Vegas. Let's put turbulence on because rare day when you don't get some turbulence out there. Now I noticed that the, this is mostly for high altitude flying. Yeah, least. winds we're going to go at 11,000, so we'll put 12. All right. So then on the settings, um, this says display, you know, ADSB. So when it says display it, that means you're running on XM. We so we, we would have to switch over. Um, when I go to weather setup, right. so we have product group one. Okay, and here's where I turn the animation on. So if I want to see the direction things are moving, I'll just switch over to the weather data page rather than have it confuse me as I'm flying an approach or something like that. And you get everything on here, that's good. And then the other thing we have is uh, map. And see on the map, your, your track up on the your other map page, and you're heading up here. So there's a feature called sync, and now your maps are synced. So but they're but both. That's just for weather. Uh, just for the display. You have a map here, and you have another map. All right, you have them on two different orientations. So sometimes you might see north up. So you don't want to have one north up and the other one. But this is in the weather setup map versus yeah. So I map correct settings. So these are synced. Got so it. if you switch to north up on your other map, this one will go to north up also. So it's a, it's a sync feature. Got it. Okay. okay. And then we have terrain. There's so the button I was There's a button. The so, yeah. so five miles from my airport in you know, Piners is the, uh, the Pick and Pig, which is a barbecue place. And it's <laughs> uh, it's 36 foot wide runway, and it's 2,500. And uh, I'll take a lot of folks over there, you know, for lunch during training. Or it's a, it's a great training airport because it's, it's, my, it's my short field and there's trees. And uh, that's what we'll get over there. Did we go there, Ed? I don't think we went there. No, we went down to the beach. We went the first flight. I think we went to Ocracoke, but... That took That's, me one of those single file runways. Yeah, that was down at uh, Ocracoke. Well, I, I guess we don't want to have it off all the I, time. I, I always have it on. And I just realize it's coming, and, you know, it, it doesn't bother pilots. It, it bothers passengers. Okay, so, so that's, the, it, okay. that's the tour.